G'day folks, welcome to part two of running scroll compressors open. This is a Copeland compliant scroll made in USA. Came out of a large Lenox condensing unit. That's the model there at the top. Uh, as you can see I've finished dismantling it, taken these screws and retaining sleeves out. Very tight screws and lots of Loctite they put on them. And now we're down to the bare housing, stator, which you can see down the bottom, and the rotor shaft, which I will commence rotation of. I'm not going to crank this up any harder because the entire assembly is balanced together as one assembly, and running it without any of this moving mass on it will make the compressor try to jump off the table, which I'll show you right here. The air in it very minimal revs, the whole thing tries to jump off the table. You can see the rotor down the bottom and the cycloid converter is still sitting on top. And the cycloid converter is to prevent the moving scroll from twisting around, it's just so that the scroll can oscillate and I'll demonstrate that shortly. Let's put it back together a little bit. This is the uh, moving scroll. There we go. It's allowed to move a little bit because the uh, fixed scroll is not in place. Normally the fixed scroll would tie in these points here and it would not allow it to twist like that. That's called scrambling when this converter wears out and the scroll is allowed to twist it starts scrambling and makes horrible noises that's when your scroll compressor is actually worn out so I'll bring it up slowly without throwing it everywhere and that's essentially what it does that's all it does, it just oscillates inside its housing Again, if I crank it up too fast, that will come flying off the top and probably hit me. Yep, it doesn't like when I do that. See? <laughs> Don't run them when they're unbolted, it does horrible things. I think I just ruined that bearing. Oh well, this thing's going in the junk pile anyway. Yeah. Converter jumped around too. No. no, that was where it was supposed to go. So, might as well put the top back on it and see if it still works. That's the fixed scroll. shut you up for now. Now when these work, the reason they have sleeves on the bolts is so that back pressure in the system, as the system builds pressure in the high side, it can push this little seal up. There's a little port going into the compression chamber just underneath this seal and it pushes it up and this metal surface here pushes up against the top dome of the housing and creates a tighter and tighter seal. The higher the head pressure gets the harder it pushes this fixed scroll down onto the moving scroll. It just forces it down onto it and increases or decreases the gap between this surface here and the surface up inside there. So this is, that's why Copeland scrolls wear in, not wear out. But they do wear out if this wears out. They start scrambling and it does that as it's trying to oscillate and it just makes a horrible mess. They end up breaking bits of this spiral off or just seize up and stop compressing things like that it makes a horrible mess so let's get these bolts back in and just see if it still works okay let's give this another try with the top back on now I've sandwiched some rubber washers under the uh, bolt heads as well I don't know how well it's going to work but it should hold this move the fixed scroll down a bit harder than before and eliminate the need to push down on this top part 
So it should get a bit of compression. That's if it even wants to turn at all. It might just make half a turn and go clunk. Let's uh, start her up. It's not even trying. Nah, <laughs> I think I jammed it up when I tightened it. I'll loosen these bolts off and try again. It should turn. Alright, let's try take two. I've just loosened them off two turns. That's better. You can see that seal rose up straight away. That's what it's designed to do. It's got a little ring on it. Gasket seal, whatever you call it, compression seal. There's a compression seal in there too. That one's facing up because that's the high pressure side in there. And that one's facing down because that's the high pressure side under there. It's just pressure differential that does that. Pressure trying to go from high side to low side. And that's a thermal valve by the way. If this compressor really overloads and runs up too hard and too hot, it will dump pressure out through here which had a little plastic tube on it shooting down into the uh, stator, like down into the low pressure side, it just dumps it. That's why you can't really run these till they pop. See yeah, the whole, whole thing's moving around. thing's not bolted down either so I'm not going to rev it up too much. If it does decide to seize up it'll probably come flying off the table. Yeah, it doesn't like it when they're too tight. It's designed to push down when it's running at maximum speed and horsepower. Sounds good though. And that's the intake side. Give it a bit of a lube up, I think it's a bit dry. The oil pump only works at high speed. It's a centrifugal pump. Like that. <laughs> It's working quite well, <laughs> considering what I did to it. Very cool. Well, that's all for now. now. I don't know if I'll keep this one. It's an awfully big, amusing paperweight. That's about all it's good for. <laughs> Demonstration. And since I've done my demonstration, I think I better just throw it out. I can get plenty of these out of old air conditioners. Hell, if I had a dollar for every one of the, every scroll compressor I threw out the last year, well, 
yeah, I probably should keep them and scrap them, but they're worth more as a whole steel lump, as long as you drain the oil out of them. Scrap guys do not like compressors that are full of oil, just rem remember that if you work in air conditioners. Try and drain the oil and get rid of it, or at least just, yeah, say that they don't have oil in them. That's all for now guys, and uh, thanks for watching. Well, I should say guys and girls, I know there's a lot of girls that watch my channel too. So, thanks guys and girls. Um, yeah, we passed 2.5 million video views, 2,500 subscribers, and I take it most of you are interested in either this stuff or simply blowing stuff up. So, stay tuned for more of both.